Well, the Hawaii County Council will hold its final vote on a bill today that would limit GMOs on the Big Island. Joining me now is Professor Hector Venezuela with the Crop Specialist at the University of Hawaii. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thanks, Laura. Yeah, we've, we've uh, worked together a couple of times, and you've always had such great insight um, on this issue. That's why I wanted to bring you in. Um, you've been watching this particular bill pretty closely, too, Bill uh, 113. What's your take on it? What do we need to know about it? Uh, the main thing about uh, Bill 113 is that the Big Island wants to draw a line on the sand mm -hmm. and say we don't want uh, the Big Island to be an ex what, what we have seen in Molokai and in, in Kauai and other areas where agriculture is dominated by big GMO out-of-state companies. Uh, and they're saying let's try to protect the Big Island and keep it a GMO-free island. So what are your concerns about uh, GMOs, genetically mod modified organisms, and where we are right now with the, the crops that are here and the companies that are here? What are your concerns at this point? I think with respect to Bill 113, the main things would be to protect biodiversity, uh, to protect the soil, to protect uh, beneficial insects like bees and other micro mm -hmm. microbes in the soil, but also to preserve uh, cultural lifestyle, a rural lifestyle on the Big Island, small farms, small communities. Uh, because those get somewhat disrupted when you establish large-scale monocultures. Uh, so to preserve what we have on the Big Island and to advertise it internationally, this is a special island that is GMO-free, uh, to preserve and uh, promote that kind of agriculture. Now, you have been so involved um, for decades in what's called biodiversity. Tell people about that and why it's important that we maybe consider putting more energy into that arena. Uh, biodiversity is becoming more and more important with, with the prospectus of climate change. Uh, biodiversity brings stability and strength to the community. Uh, so if there's that disturbance, there's uh, the biodiversity comes in to allow to produce more crops and so on. So working uh, with different crops uh, that local farmers can, can produce. Right. So say you would have multiple varieties of tomatoes, multiple varieties of corn. Uh, so some varieties are adapted to specific microclimates. So you're always able to continue production despite of uh, disturbances on the environment. If you're relying on one or two varieties, less biodiversity, you become more susceptible to the effects of climate change. Uh, so you're trying to promote resilient agricultural systems, and that's kind of the idea of right. what the future of agriculture should be on the Big Island and other parts of the state. Well, you've always um, shown such care and attention to local farmers here and what's best for them, so very much appreciate you coming down. I know we're only scratching the surface, but, but your voice is so important to be heard. Thank you, Professor. Thank you for inviting me. All right. Um, in our next hour, we'll talk with Nello Farms owner Dean Okamoto. He, he's given his take on why he does support genetically modified organisms, so we'll talk to him about that.